Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video around the world right now. My name is Andrei Sechuk. I welcome you to the next online training on Analysis Workspace in Adobe Analytics. The subject of this video is Plan Fact Analysis, also known as Target versus Actual or Target Achievement Analysis. A few words about it, why it's important to have it in place. You obviously have your own goal. If you are head of e-commerce, Revenue is your primary goal, and if you have such a goal, you need to keep track on whether you are achieving that goal. If you are a paid search manager, you also have your own goal. And every goal may be broken down by different metrics like cost per acquisition, cost per click, traffic volume, revenue net spend, and many more. But the key idea here is that you should have such goals. Otherwise, you won't be able to grow as a business you won't be able to grow as a professional. So the next question is how to make sure that the goal numbers will be available in Adobe Analytics. And there are a few options. The primary option is to build the integration between Adobe Analytics and the platform or platforms where you have your targets. The second option is to manually enter your goal metrics to Adobe Analytics so that you can afterwards report and analyze against those numbers. Today I will show you how you can do plan fact analysis for both options and I will start with option number one when you have your goal numbers integrated in analysis workspace in Adobe Analytics. I will start with a table and um, first I will select those metrics that I want to analyze in my plan fact analysis. This will be net sales plan and net actuals that I have. And um, I will do this on a daily basis right now. So you can see two metrics. Uh, first, as usual, I will make my table clearer, so I will select two columns and this will help me to update the settings simultaneously for both of them. I will click on the gear icon and uncheck percent, anomalies and also background. The next step, as you may already guessed, uh, would be to add a visualization which will be trend line. There we go. I will also get rid of different um, anomalies and we'll switch to week. So this will be enough for me. So I will analyze my weekly target achievement. You can see that we have net sales plan, which is uh, the target and net sales actuals, which is the actual result. And let's rename this chart. So this will be target achievement by week. And uh, resize this chart. And we'll also update the y axis. So now it's showing me uh, where, when I overachieved or underachieved my goals. The next uh, change that I'm going to do is to lock this chart. I will select the cells with the numbers and lock selection. So now I can select anything else in the table but the chart will stay the same. This is what I wanted to do. The next uh, change that I'm going to add here is to add difference between actuals and plan because Obviously, we can see on the chart that when um, the, the blue line is upper than the green line, then everything is good, so we overachieved our target. But I also want to know by how much. And this is what I'm going to do in the table. So select two metrics and right click. In the context menu, select create metric from selection and select percent change. This will add 
a new column and this will be done automatically just within a single click. This is what you can see here. We do not see any numbers because the formatting was inherited um, from um, the previous columns. So I will need to enable percent and now I have percent. So if I have a negative percent this means that I underachieved uh, the goal or if I have a positive percent then I overachieved the goal. And now let's make it more convenient to read. We will update the conditional formatting for that. So I will click background, conditional formatting and I will set upper limit to 0, um, zero 0.1, midpoint to 0 and lower limit to minus dot zero 0.01. And this will help me to quickly recognize when I underachieved my target. And I think this is very helpful because you can quickly understand where you are good and where you didn't perform well. Now let's add this column to the chart and I'm going to add another visualization. In this particular case I will be using the bar chart. I will add it and the trick is I will deselect net sales plan and net sales actuals. Now it's very convenient to see whether we underperformed or overperformed since we have zero axis and everything which is below means a poor performance. So this was another trick and uh, we will also uh, name it. Now I want to add another visualization that would show me target achievement by month. How I can do that? So first I will resize a little my charts to free some space and I will need to add a new table. And in this table I will uh, drop a few months and we'll also add uh, the metrics the same metrics there you go and uh, let's now add another visualization that will quickly show me how we performed and this will be horizontal bar chart we'll link we'll link it to the second table and there you go very quickly to see whether we overperformed or underperformed the uh, goal numbers. One small change that you may want to do is to make sure that uh, the chart on the left and the chart on the right are aligned in terms of color of the metrics shown on them. So if on the left hand side we have net sales plan colored in green then we should have the same on the right. So I will just uh, change the order of the columns and this will make that better. And we'll also name it target achievement by month. The next uh, visualization, the next trick that I want to show you is uh, the following. In the second visualization we have um, change. We divided actuals by our target numbers. But what if you need to show target achievement? And target achievement is reported by 100% um, if you achieved your target, 
um, it will be 120% if you overachieved your target by 100 by 10%. So basically, we need to update the formula here. And let's make it. I will make a copy of that table. And now I'm going to get rid of this uh, column. And again, I will keep these two metrics selected. Right click, go to create metric from selection. And first I will click again on the same option, percent change. This will quickly add me a new metric. Now I'm going to edit it. This will be uh, my metric that will be target achievement. And I will need to uh, simply update the formula to add plus one. And this will make the trick. I will save it. And again, update the settings. It will enable percent. So now let's compare. I will make it smaller so that we will compare the side by side so that you can see the difference. There you go. So if we underachieve the target by 10%, our target achievement is 90%. If we overachieved our target by 1%, then our target achievement is 101%. This is uh, a small change, but sometimes it's important. Uh, this depends on your requirements to how you report on target achievements. But I think you've got the trick. So the next step I'm going to do is to also to enable conditional formatting. And here I will set this as um, this would be midpoint 100% um, and upper limit and lower limit will be set this way. Oops, forgot that we need to use this would work. So now it's very convenient to see that we achieved our target if uh, the cell is colored with green and didn't achieve our target if the cell is colored with red. So very convenient to have it. And finally, let's add the bar chart. Um, basically, we don't need other columns. We will remove them and switch our chart to the third table. Now it's very convenient to uh, see where we achieved or underachieved our target. This is another way how you can report on target achievement. So let me copy the title and uh, there you go. Finally, let's, let's make it a little bit uh, better so we will uh, hide the data sources. And uh, let's make it this way. So, all right, so probably we'll keep it here. And um, Now it looks good. So probably in this case, I don't need to show legend, so I will uh, disable it. And uh, we are good to go. Now I want to show you what you can do if you do not have your target numbers integrated in Adobe Analytics. So um, let me start from scratch. I will add another freeform table and I will add 
the metric with the actuals. So net sales actuals. This is what I have. And I will look at the performance for this month. This is what I have. And uh, I will also get rid of the daily breakdown. So this is my current result. And since I do not have targets integrated, the question is how I can make sure that I can monitor whether I'm achieving or not achieving my targets. In Analysis Workspace, you can find the visualization that is called Bullet. Let's add it. And this looks like that. The green bar is showing you the number in the table. So this is the number that is currently shown. And then you can manually configure the goal uh, metric. So if you click on the gear icon, you will have three options. I personally usually use only one goal. I think it's much better uh, from the interpretation point of view. And what if my goal was, for example, this one? You can see that now we can uh, see the gray bar and this means that this is the gap and currently I haven't achieved my target. Let's update it and I will add here another number. And now we see that the green bar is actually longer than the gray bar. And this is the pipe, or basically this is showing me my target, my goal number. And currently we can see that we are overachieving our target. This is a good visualization that you can use. The drawback of that is that you will need to manually enter the goals and for probably different time periods you would need to keep all of them updated, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. But at the same time, this is the quickest, the fastest way how you can build such visualizations and uh, easily keep an eye on whether you are performing well or something has to be changed in your strategy, tactic, etc. to reach the goal. That's it. So also let's um, remove it, uh, sorry, replace, replace the title. And uh, this will be target achievement April. And let's place it next to the previous visualization and also hide the data source. Now we have a good project dashboard that we can use to track performance for sales actuals. In your case, this may, this may require more KPIs to be visualized. Uh, sometimes it's better to have separate projects for different buckets of KPIs, so for example, one project for e-commerce managers, another one for paid search managers, another one for social team, etc. But I hope you've got the idea and hopefully that was interesting for you if you are still watching this video. Uh, please let me know if you found my tips and tricks helpful for you personally. If you already have your own tips and tricks as to how you perform, uh, share them in the comments. Uh, also let me know what you would like me to record uh, as the next video. So I'm always happy to get your feedbacks. And if you have challenges also, tell me about your challenges. And I will make sure that I will cover some tips and tricks in the next videos to address that. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.